All right. Morning, guys. Um, so I'm Yannick. I'm from the uh, Stuttgart Media University. And um, yeah, this is Aaron. Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, HPA, for having us. It's a great honor. Um, and yeah, we're going to show you a study we did um, comparing uh, thin static shutter and HFR for shutter reduction. So we're going to quickly take you through the motivation, our methods, and then the results. So let's get started. Um, we've heard a lot about high dynamic range, and it's entering not just the broadcast sector, but also the cinema sector. And then with that come high luminance and contrast levels, and it just enhances the overall viewing experience. But it also enhances the perception of motion artifacts. And in this case, we had a look at the Judder artifacts. So we're going to show you a quick demo of what the Judder is. Um, most of you probably know it anyway. So you'll see a box going over a dark background. And we start at 1 nit over 0 0.1 nits background. Then we go to 10 over 1 nit, 100 over 10. So the contrast stays the same, but the peak luminance rises. So if you follow the uh, box, you can see that uh, the judder rises if you look at the edges, the horizontal edges. Just going to run this two times again. So this is the same contrast every time, just the luminance rises. And you see the judder. So we uh, want to uh, reduce the judder artifacts. But we also try to keep the cinematic look, as we know, as 24 frames per second looks in HDR. So first of all, we shot some footage. Um, it was recorded in standard frame rate and also high frame rate. And we had a single camera and recorded after each other. And the standard frame rate footage was recorded at 180 degrees shutter, the high frame rate footage at 192 frames per second with a 356 degrees shutter, so the maximum shutter opening. Um, we wanted to show the different kinds of motion, so we also um, have fast movements, like shaking a cocktail, and but also slower movements like walking. And the shots were specifically designed to show off the difference between standard frame rate and high frame rate. Um, for instance, the pans are much faster, then the established panning speeds recommend, and the lighting setup is way more extreme. Um, we used the Arri Amira and uh, with L Arri Ultra Primes. So here you can see some stills of the, of the scene we uh, shot. Uh, it's a bar scene, and it's set in the afternoon. Um, the barkeeper walks through the entire room and takes the order of the two guests. Then he prepares uh, the two cocktails and hands them over to the ladies. And then another guest approaches uh, the bar and orders another drink. As I said, the lighting setup is uh, very extreme, and it's a high contrast mixed light of daylight and tungsten light. And these uh, high frame rate shots uh, in the bar scene build the foundation of our uh, frame blending and post-production, which will Yannick tell you now about. All right, so about the post-production. So um, the basic idea was to, or the basic concept was to reduce jetter artifacts uh, through the addition of motion blur, actually. So um, this, well, I achieved via uh, weighted frame blending. So we, uh, I blended from 192 frames per second to 24, 24 frames per second. And um, yeah, this was all based on synthetic shutters, so I had to um, develop a function first for the synthetic shutters. And uh, next up, I have a graph of said synthetic shutter. So what we can see here, the big red box, or the several red boxes, but one of the, the one in the middle is um, your standard 180 degree box shutter. And um, yeah, the blue line represents the synthetic shutter. Um, on the x-axis, on the bottom, we have uh, 124 frames per second. So in the middle, we have the zero. And then the one on the right side is one 124th frames per second. 
And on the top, we have 192 frames per second since this was like the source material. And um, yeah, so eight, one, 192 frames make up one, one 24th frame. Um, the y axis displays the, the weight. Um, so, and, um, so what happened is basically you just do uh, like a, a, um, uh, a point um, weighing. And um, so if you progress on the, on the x axis down below, you see um, all the, the weights which get um, used for each and every frame. So the first frame will be weight, weighted at 0 0.05, and um, the next frame at 0 0.18, and so on and so forth. Um, in the upper left corner, no, upper right corner, um, this is the function I used to uh, describe the synthetic shutter, so the blue line. Um, yeah, attack release and elongation can be modified individually uh, which allowed for, um, for example, for a steeper attack, so I could um, do asymmetrical shapes as well, um, uh, or a smoother release, and the elongation basically is just how many frames will get blended, or yeah, decides how many frames will get blended. Um, so, uh, based on that, I um, started a visual study uh, with 25 particip participants in total, ranging from amateur to expert viewers. Um, they were shown a pre-selection of three different uh, synthetic shutters, um, uh, which all got, like, um, which all manu manipulated the, the scene we uh, Aaron shot, as well as a reference sequence, so uh, a reference sequence meaning the 180-degree box shutter. Um, Further, they saw it in SDR, HDR, or standard definition, in high definition, high dynamic range, sorry, standard dynamic range and high dynamic range, and 24 FPS and 48 FPS. Um, and then they, they got to rate the clip, so each clip got rated on a MOS scale, ranging from one to five, where uh, one was the most severe appearance of judder in their subjective um, opinion, and uh, five was, it wasn't perceived at all. Um, yeah. So those are the three um, Gaussian shutter I used um, from, ranging from left. So uh, we have a, a fa fairly small Gaussian shutter. We're only blending three frames. Uh, coming up on the upper, upper right where we already blended eight frames and then to the left, down left, were 17 frames. So to put that into perspective, the, this would have been like uh, um, uh, over 720 degree um, shutter, basically. So you, we took um, that frames from the past and the future and blended them in the one frame. Um, I did play around with asymmetrical shapes and even shapes with negative uh, lobes but they didn't show any noticeable difference to the Gaussian style shutter, like the, the asymmetrical shapes and the neg negative lobes um, actually produce very grotesque black splotches all over the, the frame. So um, I ruled them out before I actually started the, the visual study. And, um, yeah, and you can see the factors I used for the attack release and the elongation. Um, yeah, and now we show, or we can show them in action um, bear in mind that this will, this is a uh, standard definition. Um, the, we don't have the high definition clips with us right now. So, okay, we, this is starting with the, the reference of the box shutter. Uh, oop. Should start right away. So this is the reference shot. Um, the reference shot was shown each time before, um, they got shown a clip they have to rate, so they always got set back. So this is the, the smaller Gaussian shutter. And this is the medium one, around seven frames blended. Hmm? 
Ça va <laughs> And this is the 17 frames. it one more time. The Gaussian style, uh, the box shutter, sorry. Yeah, but the, I guess the jitter is very apparent on um, the vertical lines where there are many from in the background, especially the, the bottles up, the red bottles. This got very, very smooth. <laughs> All right. So, just a quick recap um, um, of croppings of the scene. So, we have the croppings of the, the bottles up top. And as you can see on the bottom left, um, there's not that much information of the bottles at all since uh, 17 frames got blended. So it's getting softer, or it, get, it did get very, very soft, which kind of was the goal to add motion blur. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, so we come to the results. So the first finding, or the first obvious finding was um, the Jada got worse in HDR uh, or uh, as the luminance increases. So, um, uh, we have a MOS scale on the, on the right side, so it's a uh, range from one to five. Um, it's overall, it's not the best rating for any of the clips. Um, so I compared all SDR 24 FPS shutters to all HDR 24 FPS shutters. And um, yeah, so basically the jetter gets worse, uh, which um, has to do, or due to the high luminance, which benefits the jetter artifacts. Um, then I compared the box shutter in 24 FPS being the reference, so they rated the reference as well with the medium Gaussian style shutter in 24 FPS which got the best or the highest rating um, of the Gaussian style shutters. But there was no significant uh, jitter reduction. And finally I compared 24 FPS with 48 FPS and um, yeah, this got very clear results of the most significant difference. Um, so the 48 FPS clips um, almost showed no jitter at all. Um, well, and it didn't even matter which, which uh, Gaussian style shutter I used. So the jitter got reduced very significantly. And um, yeah, basically what we can take from that is that in 48 FPS the jitter is hardly perceived and uh, there's no significant differ difference between HDR and uh, SDR in 48 FPS. So a frame rate increase equals a serious jitter decrease. Um, yeah, so up to the key findings. So jitter is more disturbing in HDR compared to SDR. Um, synthetic shutter shapes cannot significantly reduce jitter in 24 <laughs> FPS presentation. And uh, HFR resolves judder issues, but motion is rendered less cinematic. So um, with HDR um, even entering the cinematic or the, yeah, the cinema sector, um, with, for example, Samsung having these big LED kind of screens and stuff, um, there will be more luminance and there will be more judder in the future. So um, for future work, um, the question is how to maintain cinematic or film look in in high, higher frame rate and higher and H HDR basically. Um, yeah. So that's it.
do we say Pierzeich in Bavarian? <laughs> And I guess we're up for questions, if there are any. I have a question while we wait. Yeah. Um, Did you, have you seen what Pixelworks is showing next door? Yeah, yeah, we've seen that. What do you think? Um, well, um, the thing is, I think when we have the 24 FPS uh, footage, it's hard. Well, I, I haven't seen a real solution from Pixelworks to reduce the judder in, and stay in 24 FPS. So, and both the, the, um, the cinematic look, I guess. Yeah. Any questions? Up. Um, so, why did you choose 192? Frame rate to for the testing. Sorry, come again. Oh, sorry. One ninety two frame rate. Oh. For the um, testing. So uh, basically, that the the footage Aaron shot was already in one hundred ninety two, and this was the cap on the area mirror actually. So we couldn't get any more frames, and uh, one hundred ninety two is um, easily divided by eight to get twenty four frames per second. So the math was a, fa a big factor as well. Did you choose like lower frame rate, like 120 for the testing too? Low what, sorry, lower? Lower, yeah, like 120 or oh. lower than 190. Um, so actually the, the footage I had was, wasn't 192 frames per second, so I, I didn't, I haven't had any lower frame rates to work with. Uh, so you have your uh, filtered curve, but did you um, make an, uh, a Fourier transform of the transfer function uh, to see how it behaves in the frequency domain uh, compared to your, basically your sample frequency of uh, 24 or 192 uh, frames per second? Uh, can you repeat that? It's I, <laughs> very hard to understand up here. Frequency analysis. Uh, do it. Do a Fourier transform of your uh, of your sampled function to see how the transfer function looks like, because then you already know without having uh, to make too much uh, movies uh, what will happen, because your frequency domain uh, tells you what uh, the, the jutter and the blur will be. That's the Fourier transform. Yeah. Uh, so we we didn't do a frequency domain test actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 